A lot of times outdoor photography isn't as simple as just pointing and shooting. There are many factors to consider and a lot of preparation that go into making a great outdoor photograph. Hi, I'm Don Gale and I'm a professional photographer from Los Angeles, California. On this Tamron podcast, I'm going to be showing you how to improve your outdoor photography with some basic tips. For this demonstration, we're going to be using the new Tamron 18 to 200 millimeter XR Di2 lens, and it's made specifically for the small sensor on my new Fuji S3 camera. This is an extremely versatile lens. I can shoot wide angle, telephoto, and macro without ever having to change lenses. It's also very small and lightweight, and it's a great lens for travelers that can't or don't want to pack more than one lens. I don't want any camera movement to affect the sharpness of these pictures, so we're using a tripod. If you have a specific photograph in mind, the first thing you need to consider is the position of the sun. I came here early in the morning because the sun's shining from the east directly on the faces of the surfers. If we'd have come here later in the day when the sun was directly overhead, we wouldn't have been able to get all the detail that we can now. First, I'm going to use the telephoto end of this lens to shoot the surfers in action. And in order to freeze the motion, I'm going to shoot wide open so that I can increase the shutter speed. For the first series of pictures of the surfers, we were down on the beach shooting right straight out at them. In order to get a different perspective, we just walked up on the pier. We could walk out to where they were so we were able to get a much closer picture. And shooting down at them gave us a nice, very unique second angle. The 18 to 200 zoom range is powerful enough to give me an 11 to 1 ratio, which is unbelievable. So it'll work well for this particular shot. We have the lens set at 200 millimeter, which is its maximum length. It's going to give us the largest image on the sensor. And we have the lens wide open, so that's going to give us the fastest shutter speed. And as a result of shooting wide open, it's going to be very shallow depth of field, which is going to draw your eye right to the surfer. One of the unique things about this picture is we're actually underneath the pier shooting out toward the ocean and we're completely surrounded by the pilings on both sides and by zooming in to the proper focal length I was able to make sure the shot was just pilings only and the underneath side of the pier and the ocean you can see out there at the end is kind of like a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, a little bit earlier you can see here in this picture the light was much contrastier uh, and half the picture is bright sunlight the other half is shadow and it's interesting from a contrast point of view, but not nearly as interesting as this softer light one is from an architectural point of view. Tip the board just that way a little more. Good. Then turn your face to your left. I want to get a shot of the surfer here in front of the pier, but because you can't control where the sun is in the sky, sometimes we have to redirect the sunlight where you need it. And in this case, we're going to use a silver reflector to bounce some of this light back into the shadow side of this guy's face so that it balances in brightness with the pier in the background. Although when we came out here this morning, our main objective was just to get shots of the surfers. There was a group of junior lifeguard training uh, classes here on the beach, and these kids just came running down along the beach. And from our right, as we faced the water, they were front lit. We were able to get some great shots of that. And then as they passed us and went down to the left or south of us, they were backlit. So from our same vantage point, we were able to get shots frontlit and backlit. And as you can see, the differences in the lighting are just amazing. After finishing shooting the surfers, I noticed that at the end of the pier was a traditional 50s diner. When you want to get a close-up picture of something, this 18 to 200 actually has a macro feature. Now we're going to get a close-up shot of this milkshake here at 200 millimeter and we've got the lens focused at 18 inches. And in this focal length, it really is a macro lens. Now we're gonna zoom back to 18 millimeters for a wider view, and it still maintains that same 18 inch minimum focusing distance. Try to put these tips into practice next time you're out shooting. Visit your Tamron dealer for more information on the 18 to 200 millimeter lens.
And the Tamron website is a great place to go for podcasts and just general photographic tips. Thank <laughs> you.